Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we'll be taking a look at the Belfast, but the, the other Belfast. So, there's a, there are now two Belfasts in the game. And this one is the 1943 configuration of the Belfast in Tier 8. I need to explain this a little bit. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> so... Uh, we have the Belfast at Tier 7. This is actually the mid-1950s refit of the Belfast, where she was you know, refitted for further service before she eventually became a museum ship. The 1943 Belfast that we have here is, well, in her configuration as she would have been in the mid-40s. And as such, is actually an earlier version than the Belfast we have at Tier 7. <laughs> so what had happened was that uh, Belfast, while she was busy in many, many things, this is, a, this is an absolutely amazing ship, we can make a whole video just about the career of the Belfast, uh, she was she ran across a, she ran onto a mine and a sea mine exploded under her underneath her hull and uh, did well bend a lot of things so she needed an extensive refit and that was kind of the first refit that she got where she was receiving a bunch of new anti-aircraft guns a bit more radar and all these kind of things she then went on to serve until the end of the war and serve in the Korean War and then was eventually refitted again which is bringing us to the Belfast as we see here, because that at tier 7 is the 50s refit, where they had the torpedoes removed, which explains the conspicuous absence of torpedoes at the tier 7 Belfast. And you can also sort of see, I'm zooming in a little bit, you see that the superstructure looks a lot chunkier uh, than, on the, uh, than on the 1943 Belfast, which now looks more like the Edinburgh was, was looking like. And uh, that's because, well, the Edinburgh is the, ship, is the sister ship, but uh, this was a refit where, uh, among other things, uh, they had provided better accommodation and uh, uh, resistance against biological, chemical and nuclear fallout. So uh, that's where this sort of chunkier, uh, chunkier superstructure came from. Uh, and you can, you can relatively clearly see the, the radar dish on the top there. And uh, we should be having a radar here as well somewhere, but I'm not entirely sure where they stuck it. Uh, it might be, yeah, yeah, we can see it sort of there on top of the, the superstructure as well. Anyway, so uh, HMS Belfast, by the way, still exists and is uh, a museum ship, which is, which is all, all manner of great whenever that happens. Uh, so 1943 Belfast. Well, let's have a look at how these things compare to each other. Once that loads, there we go. So the first and obvious check is how does the Belfast 43 differ from the Belfast? Uh, the Belfast at tier seven is a competitive ship. Uh, you would see that uh, it's a it's a fairly frequent choice that people would would pick during competitive sorts of battles in tier seven because well she's got a lot of good ship skills and uh, it's just an all around very 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 powerful ship in tier seven. Uh, let's compare the two. So at tier 7, the Belfast, the 1950s Belfast, <laughs> gets three smoke screens, two, uh, two sonar, two, and a single radar, one. The Belfast 43 in tier 8 gets three smoke screens, smoke screen three, smoke screen twos. She gets only the sonar one. So what's the difference between the sonar two? That's 4.5 kilometer range, and that's 3.75 kilometer range. That's the difference. But she, in return, she gets better radar. So we're going from a 7.2 kilometer radar to a 8.1 kilometer radar. And she also gets a defensive AA. This is the defensive AA-1, which adds 75% of AA on these two. So plenty of ship skills. On top, she actually gets torpedoes because this is the, remember, while this is a tier higher, this is actually the older Belfast. <laughs> so she does get the British single fire torpedoes and she's getting a, she gets an extra heal. In terms of well numbers she has a little bit more hit points because it's tier 8 other than that it is a very typical British light cruiser hull um, entirely <laughs> entirely made out of citadels waiting to happen uh, she is not quite as maneuverable 
as the more modern version of the Belfast. The guns are having have, have received a little bit of a buff in terms of I mean they're the exactly same guns, but it's a, it's an up tier, right? So they have received a little bit of a buff in terms of range and damage output, but other than that, they are the exact same guns. The AP is now on par with the Edinburgh. And she gets torpedoes, but these are two triple launches, which is quite unusual. I believe the Edinburgh gets quadruples. We'll look at that in a second. 7.8 kilometer range. And the AA is a bit better than on tier 7. Uh, still not an AA monster by, by, any, by any means. The surface detection is the same. Uh, let's have a look at the Edinburgh, because now these, this is, these are actually the sister ships now. Because Edinburgh obviously is also in her World War II configuration still. Uh, we see that, well, the Edinburgh has fewer ship skills, obviously. And in terms of numbers, the Edinburgh, again, is more maneuverable than the Belfast, which is a bit of a bummer. But uh, we see that the, the guns are very comparable, except for that the Edinburgh, obviously, as a Tech Tree British ship, is not firing high explosive. The torpedoes on the Edinburgh... Um, you get one more launcher on each side, but in return have a longer reload, less damage and shorter range. So I would say, all in all, probably the torpedoes on the Belfast are are somewhat superior. And the, the Edinburgh actually has better AA than the Belfast. <laughs> but still, uh, they are not AA monsters. And the, uh, the Edinburgh is ever so slightly worse in concealment. Uh, so just to make, to bring that point home, let's compare it to the Cleveland, because the Cleveland would also be a ship that get that has both sonar and radar, but uh, it's a radar one, so similar to the Tier Seven, and uh, she doesn't get smokescreen obviously or torpedoes, but she does get a better uh, defensive AA skill, and if uh, all in all is a much sturdier ship, and much more maneuverable ship, but if we compare the um, the AA, yeah, th that's more what I'm talking about. So, so that's AA um, at tier eight. Uh, what the Belfast ha 43 has isn't. So while you can shoot down some planes, you're not going to be shooting down. You're not going to be able to defend yourself solo against a carrier that wants to strike you. But that's one reason you've got smoke screens for, honestly. Now, let's have a look at uh, the setup. And I can I can already see the comments coming in, but we'll we'll, we'll talk about it. I, we'll, we'll get to the modules in a minute. Uh, you get two choices. You can either get down the reload a little bit and give you a bit of uh, traverse, or you get the twenty percent traverse speed, effectively the same as the uh, the, as the uh, the module in slot one. Now these are these turrets have a nine degree per second base traverse, which is not enough. Uh, that's heavy cruiser stats. For something as, as lightly armored as this thing, you need a bit more than that because you need to maneuver to, to compensate for the absence of armor. Which means uh, I have put the main battery mod 1 in here. You could say, Terry, why didn't you use the main battery mod 3? Honestly, I don't feel it makes an awful lot of a difference. It stacks sort of nicely with ships that have, you know, the precise aim skills and all these kind of things, but uh, you don't get that here. And you have a very, uh, you have relatively uh, high rate of fire. So I think turret, uh, the turret traverse is is the the best choice here. You sort of do want propulsion <laughs> in the second slot, at least the way I'm playing this thing. Now you could argue that you you could you could use the steering gear mod here because the rudder is a bit on the sluggish side and use the concealment in three, because this is going to be the controversial one. I know, I know. <laughs> Pretty much everyone's going to build this thing with concealment. Um, I don't build my British light cruisers for concealment. <laughs> Because, you know, I've got smokescreen, which is portable concealment to a degree, and I have, uh, I've got guns, right? These are gun cruisers. These are not torpedo boats. These are not oversized destroyers. For me, this is a gun cruiser, and I need these gun barrels to run red hot during a battle. If I'm not firing my guns, why am I even playing? So, uh, <sighs> That means concealment really only helps in the onset, in the early opening stages of a battle. Yes, you can disengage and all these kind of things, but honestly, nah, where's the fun in that? <laughs> so yes, uh, you could absolutely, uh, and, and I know that probably a lot of people are doing that, use the concealment, uh, the concealment system modification, and then either go with rudder or go with propulsion. 
and uh, that would get your concealment down to uh, 7.56 kilometers, which isn't destroyer le level quite. It's not terrible. It's, it is good. It's a good concealment. But honestly, uh, I, I am then running on an 8.4 second turn time. And in something that has no armor and is just waiting to be blown out of the water by Italian semi-armor piercing. Um, no. <laughs> I'm going to stick with my setup here. Because with this, we are getting ourselves into... Uh, into an under and uh, below 10 second uh, time to full speed and a 7.3 second turn time, which is still not great, it's still not Cleveland level, but um, it's workable and you can use the smoke screen to uh, to assist with these things. So if you're in for an aggressive build, that would be my recommendation. If you're trying to do more of the sneaky thing and you know drop some torpedoes on things and you know, like do do the pop out as, uh, assault disengage sort of playstyle, or you're trying to surprise destroyers, these kind of things. Yeah, by all means, concealment is a valid build, but you gotta be real careful then uh, to to be able to deal with incoming fire. And I have been blown out, bl blown clean out of my, my smoke screens, so that happens. People have learned that this works. The historical camouflage, given that it's a premium ship, I assume people might uh, invest in that gives range on both the main battery on torpedo it gives us better traverse and better surface detection which is all great so using that uh, we now get uh, a turn time of 7.6 seconds which is sort of workable and a gun range of almost 12 kilometers which isn't massive but um, again something that uh, that you can work with so with all these ship skills, I have actually taken the battlefield support for an additional sonar and AI defense alert. Um, the AI defense alert, the def AA isn't going to do an awful lot, but having another sonar, having a third sonar is kind of nice because this thing is an absolute nightmare against destroyers. So using using the def AA to its maximum potential to just compensate for the kind of underwhelming performance of the AA guns. If the carrier decides that he wants to focus on you, then at least you can make them... You, you can't prevent them from doing it, but you can make them regret it. <laughs> so, uh, other than that, um, I have actually... Uh, I have actually used the Daredevil here. You could argue that you want to use Survivalist, but uh, the... You've got four repair kits. You have an extra. So, having the, having the fully prepared for the repair kit cooldown is very very important but i have four repair kits so and this ship doesn't have an awful lot of hit points to begin with so an extra 15 percent health isn't going to make a huge difference uh you could use the recon you could use the exploit weakness uh i, I think i've just ported yeah i've just taken them over from the edinburgh so for some reason i've got the generalist skill here in here i would probably i would probably go with um i go with uh, recon here or with exploit weakness they're both both good skills to have and uh, the Mistweaver is a very, very obvious choice. Now, there are a couple of legendary captains, and um, so <laughs> unsurprisingly, there's a crate again out there, I presume. I think it's a crate for legendary captains. So, for example, if you went, if you were going with, um, where is he, with BT, and you would get the Mistweaver Plus, which gives you a 33% reduction on the cooldown time <laughs> and a 20% increase on the skill duration. You basically have almost perma smoke in this thing. Uh, and obviously BT also has six tens, which would be extremely useful in this kind of ship. And he's got the increased survival list, which again, I think with something that low on hit points isn't really going to make a huge difference, but it, it is all there. And you could obviously also, I believe, Jellico. Oops, I didn't want to sign him. Uh, yeah, Jellico also gets the Mistweaver Plus, and he actually gets the Fully Prepared Plus. So he'd be also a great choice, because he would get, um, with the four heals that you have, uh, you, would, you, would get, uh, you would get the heal off quicker. And he also has the, has the increased survival list. So you can heal back a lot of things. So he would be a great choice as well for this ship. Uh, but uh, we were... Uh, I, I just had this commander here. Because I had him laying around, but yeah, you uh, you probably would have said him quite slightly differently than what I've done. Anyway, so what do we have now? We have um, a ship that in tier seven was pretty murderous. 
But this is tier 8, <laughs> which means you get into tier 9 battles. Can she hold her own? Let's check. Our first battle is a 5v5 against double Iowa, a Zeton, a Mogami and a Tallinn on the enemy team. So no destroyers for me to hunt. And we're playing uh, Crash Zone, Domination. Domination is quite nice because, you know, you can make use of, uh, of your smoke screens to rush a cup early, things like that. But uh, let's see where it goes. Uh, the bots are ca the the carriers are bots, so uh, there's no real go no real scouting going to happen, and which means I'm going to switch over to the armor piercing because I'm probably going to see a cruiser first. And against other cruisers, uh, the uh, the AP can be quite uh, can be quite effective. Uh, we do have a Vittorio Veneto with us, so at least there's some firepower coming along. Let's see if he's going over to C Cup, but there's plenty of concealment. There's a lot of uh, there are a lot of little islands here that we can use, and obviously I have my smoke screens that uh, I don't necessarily just use need to use for myself. I can uh, use these to support my team as well because well it's a cruiser, right? You support things. Area uh, okay, team calls out A. Uh, not sure why, because we're currently focusing B and C, and these cups are extremely far from each other. I would not recommend going to A, actually. Uh, we have something battleshipy coming in, so high explosive it is. And what is that? Okay, that's a bot Amagi. I don't really care about that too much. But that Mogami I do care about, and he's he's as stealthy as I am. So Mogami has torpedoes, sonar up. And uh, let's start setting a fire. And uh, let's drop some torpedoes in his direction. He he might not know to, to, to his to his defense, he might not know that um, that Belfast <laughs> 43 has torpedoes, because the regular Belfast does not. So this might come as a surprise to him. As I <laughs> hello torpedoes. <laughs> I can't push in there unfortunately because A Mogami torpedoes and B uh, there's a Zeton coming, and that's not something I'm gonna be fighting. And my Vittorio Veneto has said nope. <laughs> I'm not having any of this. Why would I support you in the capture circle? My Takao does. Um, so maybe he can get some some torpedo hits off, but he seems to be more interested in farming the bot. Uh, use your first heal early because you've got four of them. You have to uh, make as much use as you can. Okay, stop farming the bot. Uh, there's a Mogami that needs killing, and uh, there's a Zeton that, that needs killing. And that Mogami is trying to obviously burn me down. And uh, I, c I could use a smoke, but um, okay, Takao is really really trying to get that bot um, bot Amagi farmed and killed. Yep. So you get your, your damage in. Uh, it's not bad to get the bots out of the way, but um, if, you, if you've got things in the in the rear that are trouble, then um, it might be worth, you know, diverting your fire a little bit. Okay, there comes the Zeton. So smoke up and I'm going to break out that Vittorio Veneto. I think that's the Veneto, such that he can actually use my smoke screen. I know he's got fuel smoke himself, but uh, doesn't need to use it if I can just lay a float for smoke screen. So would you please... Would you please stop? Uh, just put the ship in reverse. I've already brought you down to half he uh, half speed, so you should be in the smoke screen safe. I'm gonna distract the Zeton and you blab it in the side. Okay, he has stopped. Nice, well done. Uh, and the Zeton is shooting at me, so because he can't see the Veneto. Uh, well, no, the Veneto has sailed out of the smoke screen again. Well, you can only ever try so hard. <laughs> Mogami is still alive, but uh, Zeton is obviously the bigger problem. Um, Veneto, you know that Zeton has torpedoes, right? You don't want to get into that kind of fight with a Zeton. Uh, my torpedoes are going to help. So we've got uh, got a couple torpedo hits in, got the flood, Mogami is back. Uh, so you've got Zeton from there, right? I mean, you're going to take all the torpedoes. Yep. <laughs> But uh, maybe he can survive it and still help me out with the Mugami. Anyway, uh, the Zeton is down and that's what matters right now. Let's try to get this cup because we are very low on, on score. And the Veneto is on Perma Flood. Did you damage control single fire, my friend? Okay, I'll give you another smoke screen just to make sure that you survive that HE spammer over there. Because if he gets a fire on you, you're dead. And we really can't uh, we really can't lose the points at this point. So, okay, smoke screen up. I'm doing the whole, whole thing again. I'm gonna stop. Uh, I'm gonna stop you there. Get you in the smoke so the Mogami can't see you anymore, can't set a perma fire. Okay, and the Takao takes out the Mogami. Nicely done. Veneto survives. And we can finally get ourselves a capture circle. Okay, we are one kill ahead at this point. Mm, Takao, you're back here. That Zeton in B is going to die. So we we're gonna be equal on we're gonna be equal on uh, on kills again. So it's important to have another capture circle, and then maybe we can make something happen. Our carrier is going to die, obviously, because it's a bot carrier. Uh, 
uh, uh, enemy bot has taken out. Oh, there comes a full health Iowa. What's my team been doing on that flank all this time? How is this Iowa has not a single scratch on its paint? Anyway, let's uh, let's change that fact. Okay, he doesn't want to go into the capture circle. Good, good. So let's go and get ourselves tucked in behind the island. He can't see me. And well, he can now. That's not him. That is the cruiser. Okay, I'm gonna use another heal. That's the Talon. Mm, Talon is on relatively low hit points. Maybe we can kill the Talon first. That'd be nice. But I think that Iowa is gonna pop around. Yeah, the other Iowa is shooting at me. Okay, smoke screen up. Uh, yeah, because even uh, even a even even a light cruiser, well, a somewhat light cruiser, is going to. Um, on, was the Talon a light cruiser? No, the Talon wasn't a light cruiser. Yeah, there's the Iowa. Okay, he knows he sees the smoke screen. Ah, stupid carrier. Okay, so torpedoes out and uh, back off behind the island. There's another Iowa behind me. So um, he'll take one of these torpedoes. And unfortunately, he can now see me. That's not because my smoke's in the right position. Hey, Takao, okay, you take out the Iowa there, right? You're coming in with torpedoes because I'm getting hammered from the other side. Takao, torpedoes? Um, maybe? No? Oh well. <laughs> Uh, okay then. <laughs> uh, why would you do that if you don't even have torpedoes ready? Anyway, uh, let's get a couple more torpedoes off of that, that Iowa. I'm still coming under fire from the carrier. Uh, the other Iowa has died, but it's now just me and Taco, and that Taco um, is probably going to die to the Talon. So, unless I can kill that Iowa by a miracle and can, can get another heal off, but I'm too close. So a single, uh, I'm on 3,000 hit points. Like two, 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 uh, two penetrating hits from his main guns are just going to kill me. So can we survive? No. <laughs> but uh, we've done 104,000 points of damage, 300 team score, and uh, obviously it wasn't enough. <laughs> Because, yeah, that Takao is probably... Oh, he might be taking out the Talon. Uh, no, he missed. Uh, no, he missed again. <laughs> Are you seriously losing the gunfight against the 100 hit point Talon? And... Talon shot out. Okay, Takao has finally managed to hit the Talon, but uh, the, uh, has, been, has been wiped off by whatever was left on the other side. And that's that. And the Tallinn has uh, has taken the MVP on this one, but uh, look, <laughs> for a tier eight cruiser, that wasn't terrible, was it? <laughs> I, I, you you can't say I haven't tried. So this is this is sort of the uh, support cruiser role that you can take in this ship, and uh, do do what you what you're trying to do, what you can do to to support your team. But that's not the primary role of this thing. Because the primary role of this thing is hunting destroyers. We are playing Epicenter on Cage, and it's a it's a it's again a tier nine game, but uh, the only tier nine on the enemy team is a Yugumo, so I honestly really don't care. Uh, everything else in the in the game is is tier eight, so pretty flat out. We're up against Monarch, Double Belfast forty three, another Talon over there, a Cleveland Yugumo and Lo Yang. So. Uh, our Kagero and our Merka are probably not feeling all too brave right now, because that's three radar cruisers on the enemy team. I don't think the Talon has radar, but... Ah, <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Anyway, Epicenter Cage, let's go. Let's see if these other guys have figured out how to play this thing yet. Anyway, uh, we are spawning right flank. So, yeah, our destroyers are probably not feeling all that brave right now, with, uh, with three radar cruisers on the enemy team. Uh, switch over to the armor piercing because, well, the only thing that I'll really be firing the HE at is, is probably the Cleveland at range and the battleship. Hmm, am I going to go center? Where's Kagro going? I mean, Kagro could go, try to at least go towards center. It's a very stealthy ship. If he can get behind the island and they can't they can't get into flanking positions where they can actually shoot him. Hmm, yeah, Kagro seems to go in. So I'm going to go right flank here and make sure that, uh, that that's clear because that will be being positioned behind this island means I can give both fire support against enemy ships on the uh, in the center and it allows me to 
it allows me to uh, to make to to catch anything that tries to come down this flank because honestly with a smoke screen i'm not gonna rush even with a smoke screen i'm not gonna rush the center because i'm just gonna get radared and then uh, absolutely massacred by the other uh, other belfasts out there okay there's lo yang he got himself spotted so let's uh, let's start and you see i'm unspotted so be that's because there's nobody ahead of me and i just need to get the range on that lo yang and then we can start doing something he's out of my radar range but um uh, we can still unload some blind fire on him. Unfortunately, no hits so far, but uh, let's see if we can reacquire this thing. Okay, I'm detected. That means there is somebody. There's a destroyer out here. Okay, one of the destroyers is doing a flank run. Let's intercept him. Hello, Mr. Yugomo. <laughs> Sonar up and <laughs> brown alert. <laughs> yep, there come the torpedoes. This is gonna thread the needle. That's not a terrible drop, honestly. It might take one or so. Mm, can I just wiggle behind? Ah, I zigged where I should have zagged and go through. Anyway, uh, yeah, that Hugomo is now suddenly not feeling like running up this flank and trying to stealth top everybody from the side. It was, um, it was a good plan, but it isn't happening. Uh, team, why are you lemming training after me to chase that Hugomo? While the whole enemy team is in the capture circles. Okay then. All right, you, you go you go chase that Yugomo. I am in a position. I'm taking fire from a couple of directions, but I am in a position where I can. There's Cleveland. Now, does that Cleveland have radar ready? Let's find out. Um, he doesn't. Or he doesn't know how radar works. <laughs> Either of these is possible. Have some torpedoes. And uh, we're, we're going to get some shots in, start using the heal. Yep, there come some torpedoes from the center because there's... Uh, what was it? It was an Asashio, I believe, that was sitting in the center. But now... I'm in a position, and I think my destroyers are starting to get uh, to, to become a little brave now that I'm destructing Cleveland over here. Um, there's another Belfast, yeah. Let's let's give the destroyers all the support they can get, and uh, help uh, assist with uh, with the capping. So you, you see, there's your downside uh, of the concealment. As long as you shoot, it's up again. <laughs> so. Uh, we've got we've got a great flanking position at this point against anything that sits in the center. And uh, yes, there were I haven't forgotten about you, Mr. Yugomo. No, no, I haven't forgotten. Okay, now I'm starting to draw fire from the Cleveland and the Belfast. Belfast shooting high explosive. That means they haven't really understood how this thing works quite yet. Uh, there's the Lo Yang. Hello, Mr. Lo Yang. And this is why I wanted this position so badly because now I can do this to the Lo Yang. <laughs> Uh, hello. Yeah, now you're getting flanking shots. Okay, smoke up. Loyang goes undetected. Radar up. Loyang is no longer undetected. <laughs> and yes, I can lob that. And you are in all kind in all kinds of trouble now. Yeah, that's not gonna help you. My radar might have gone down, but you are now a very dead Loyang. Okay, that's that guy down. There's the Yugomo. Hello. And a couple of shots out. Did he get torpedoes away? I don't know. Sonar up just in case there's any torpedo uh, threat around. But now, yeah, I'm gonna have to do this myself, am I? Okay, another heal. There's Monarch. Gotta watch out a little bit with Monarch, but he is firing high explosives. So I can still Citadel me flat through, but uh, it's not as bad as Armor Piercing. Yep, there come the, there come the Yugomo Torps. That's why I've got the Hydra running. But now it's finally time to get that center cup. How are we on points? Uh, we're still behind on points because of their, but they're two kills down now. And uh, there's another Belfast on that side. Yeah, that's not how you... There's a black North Carolina. You see that, right? You do not broadside that thing. And you have sonar. Use it! <laughs> okay, something is over there. I, I, I almost feel like something went over there. Because I haven't seen the, the other destroyer in a while. And there's still one of them left. Okay, that thing's dead. Um, let's start uh, farming the... Oh, we've captured... We finally managed to capture the center. But now everyone's in the center. <laughs> Alright, uh, Cargo, you come under fire from Cleveland. Do you want to smoke? Here's one. Have a smoke. I don't really need it, honestly. Uh, no, you don't want it? Okay, that's fine. I'll just sit in it then for now. But yeah, uh, we, we're only holding the center cup, so they're still getting points. They're still ahead on points. They're three kills down. They're still ahead on points. But that monarch is now in all is in a world of pain, so um, nothing's really going to happen. Let's see if I, can itch, uh, if I can inch out into the middle ring and at least get some capture progress going here. While we're farming that monarch. Uh, okay, so that monarch should be relatively dead. Oh, hello, Mr. Destroyer. Yep, I see you. Oh, I see you, Gumon. <laughs> nope. Oh, he smokes up. Isn't that cute? Hello, Mr. Yugumo. <laughs> yeah, nah, that's not happening, buddy. <laughs> this is a Belfast. Even if this was a tier 7 Belfast, you should know better. <laughs> These things have radar. <laughs> Yeah, you screwed. Okay, so that's the Yugomo taken care of, which now only leaves the Cleveland. 
Ah, oh, God. Um, it just nearly <laughs> leaves the Cleveland. Okay, no, North Carl, can you not die? Yeah, he's healing because we're we're in for a ruffle stomp medal, and if he can survive, I try not to die. Um, he's on. He's relatively low, but he's healing. No fire from the Cleveland, and okay, he takes him out. Sweet, and that's it. And I think we did. Did we all survive? I believe we did. So that should be a ruff, a ruffle stomp medal for um, for all around. Uh, for all, all, all around badassery. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, this is this is the true purpose of this ship. Uh, it is an absolute murderous monster against anything um, destroyerish <laughs> that, that has the that has the bad fortune to to get into its range. Because uh, this is a radar Edinburgh <laughs> or a smoke Cleveland, if you want. <laughs> With torpedoes, with torpedoes, mind you. So it's not like the old Belfast, the, the, the newer Belfast, that you can just rush. But this thing, <laughs> no, this rushes you right back again. Uh, yeah, this is a great ship. Um, very, very much a fun ship. And uh, very, very much enjoying the ship. You, you obviously need to, you know, you need to be a cruiser player in order to enjoy it fully. Because if you just sit still in your smoke and uh, try to farm battleships, you're wasting half the potential of this thing. And if you're trying to sit broadside and torpedo things, um, that's also not a great way of surviving. So you kind of need to have that British light cruiser skill set in order to enjoy this ship. But if you do, and if you're happy with playing things like the Edinburgh, oh boy, have I got news for you. Um, now, the ship is in a, is in is in a bundle, I believe. Uh, there's also an event going on, but uh, as usual, the... I think the victory uh, blitz things only gets you this far in the event tree, so uh, you might have to throw a couple of throw a bit of gold after it in order for event crates if you want to go down that route, or you know maybe she comes out in the shipyard at some point. But uh, the important lesson to take home for all destroyer players out there: if you see one in battle, uh, beware. Better not be close to it because these things are not taking any prisoners. <laughs> Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.